Kia ora year 12 and 13. In this video, I want to talk about how we can use complex numbers to help us solve harder trig identities. So this video is not going over an old scholarship question. Um, it's going to look at these two questions here. The first one is a trig proof. Okay, so we need to show that cos of 5 theta is equal to all of this thing here. Notice that on the left hand side, I've got no terms with sine and everything is in terms of cos theta. Okay, so another way I could have written that would be express cos of 5 theta in terms of cos theta. From that, hence, we want to show that cos of 18 degrees is equal to this exact value. So don't even think about reaching for your calculator. Um, there are lots of ways to do both parts of this question, but one of the reasons I want to use it, De Moivre's theorem in complex numbers to do it is because it's a really good technique to have at your fingertips for harder trig problems. You'd never be expected to do this in something like a level 3 trig exam, but in the scholarship exam it's all about making links between different bits of maths. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that there are lots of ways to find this angle here, and some of them are much more elegant than the one I'm going to show you here. If you want to go and investigate those, you could leave a comment saying what you'd found. Um, I might try and do another video looking at alternative methods to find cos of 18 degrees. But to start with, these are the ideas that we're going to use in this video, which will probably be the full 15 minutes long. So the first big thing is de Moivre's theorem, so revision of that from complex numbers. Then we're going to recall how we can expand an expression like this. We can either use a binomial expansion or a, a quick version of it, which is Pascal's triangle. We're going to go over multiples of i. So simplifying multiples of i. Or sorry, I mean powers of i, not multiples of i. All right, we're going to need to do that. That's not hard. That's from uh, Achieve Level 3 Complex Numbers. And then we're going to talk again about how equating the real and imaginary parts of something can help me solve a problem. And in the last part of the question, we're going to find a lurking quadratic equation. And you found those, first of all, at Level 2 in Algebra, but they come up all the time in scholarship questions. So um, grab a cup of tea or coffee and make sure you go through this really slowly with me as I'm doing it. You'll get much more out of it if you do it yourself as we go. So we're going to start off by saying, well, what does De Moivre's theorem tell, tell us? Well, De Moivre's theorem says that if we take a complex number, and I'm just going to make it cis theta, not r cis theta, but if cis theta to the power of n is equal to cis of n theta. So here we're going to do this using n equals 5. So we have this cis theta to the power of 5 is equal to cis of 5 theta. Now we're interested in cos of 5 theta and we haven't got that quite yet. So let's see what we've got when we write out what cis theta means in full. Right, so what we need to do from here is we need to expand the left-hand side and then we're going to collect up real parts and imaginary parts. And then we're going to equate them to this and this. And that means that we can then get a nice elegant expression for cos of 5 theta and we also could get one for sine of 5 theta but this video is going to be long enough as it is. So if you're sitting there watching this and you've done um, had an, a go at scholarship calculus already, or you've done A-level or level 3 calculus, um, try and pause the video here and see if you can get the whole way through to the thing we had on the last page. So I'm just going to chuck that back on the screen again. We're trying to show that cos of 5 theta is equal to this. So my basic method is now going to be to expand all of this collect up the terms, and then equate parts. So let's think about how we can expand something plus something to the power of 5. If I've got x plus y to the power of 5, it's going to be x to the power of 5 plus, now let's see, it's going to be some number times x to the power of 4y, and some coefficient, so I'm just working my way down like this. Right, so you don't want to have to sit there and do this by hand. So we need a way 
to get those coefficients quickly. The last one's going to be 1 again. And that way is, um, for something as low as 5, we're simply going to use Pascal's triangle. And if you're sitting there in a bemused state going, what is she talking about? Um, go and grab the old Delta textbook. And very early in there, I think it's in Chapter 1, there is some um, good work on this. Or leave me a comment and I'll make a separate video about binomial expansions. But what we've got here is we've got an expansion to the power of 5. So we want to go down to the fifth row of Pascal's triangle and chuck in these coefficients. Okay, so they're going to be the numbers I use. We're not doing x plus y to the power of 5, though. We are doing this, cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. So let's slowly work through the left-hand side. And once we've got that into a nice shape, we're going to equate it to the right-hand side. Right, so I've just started this off. What I'm doing here is I'm slowly working my way through the powers. So we've got um, 10 cos cubed theta times the i sine theta part squared. Right, so it's that cubed plus this squared. Then the next term is also going to be a 10. Right, so it's going to be 10 cos squared theta times this bit cubed. plus 5, we're down to cos theta, that's to the power of 1, times i sine theta to the power of 4, plus um, no cos theta is left, i sine theta to the power of 5. So that's all good, but now you can see why I wanted to go over my powers of i. So let's just do that over here. We've got i as i, i squared is negative 1, so what's i cubed? Well, I, I cubed is i times i squared, which gives me negative i. i to the power of 4 is going to be i squared squared, which is equal to 1. And again, in delta, there's a really nice exercise going through that. But you can see that those powers, as we uh, multiply by i, we rotate 90 degrees each time like this. Okay, And then i to the power of 5 just gets you back to i. So that's going to help me simplify this because remember my goal is to get real and imaginary parts. So I'm just trying to work out the best way to do it. Let me just squeeze it in down here. So cos to the power of 5 theta plus 5 cos to the power of 4 theta sine theta times i. Now with this bit here I'm going to take that i squared and um, write that as negative 1. So it's going to be minus 10 cos cubed theta times sine squared theta, right? because the i squared is negative 1. This one in here has got i cubed. Now i cubed is equal to negative i. So now we get minus 10 cos squared theta sine cubed theta times i, and in this next one we've got i to the power of 4, which is just 1. So this term simplifies to plus 5 cos theta sine theta to the power of 4. And this last one has got i to the power of 5, which is just i, so that's going to be plus sine to the power of 5 theta times i. So you can see that by using my powers of i, what I've now got is a bunch of terms that are real. So that one's real. Oops, I want a different color pen. That one's real. That one's real. And that one's real. Okay, now these ones, that one's imaginary. That one's imaginary and that one's imaginary. So we're ready now to equate the left hand side and the right hand side. So we know that all of this is equal to cos of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta. So then we need to explain what we're doing. So equating real and imaginary parts, 
well actually we're not going to bother with the imaginary parts we're just going to dump them at the side of the page so we've now got cos of 5 theta is equal to all of the real bit from in here so it's going to have three terms in it so at this point you're probably feeling really really good that you've got a whole long way through this problem and this is where we've got to so 10 cos cubed theta sine squared theta plus the last one is 5 cos theta sine to the power of 4 theta but at this point if you're like me your heart sinks just a little bit because you realize you're not quite there you've still got sine squared theta and sine to the power of 4 theta and we don't want them we just want to have cos theta everywhere but this bit is easy it's just a little bit tedious what we're going to use here is Pythagoras or the, the trig identity cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta which I really should have written the other way around sine squared of theta is 1 minus cos squared theta so the last little bit of work we've got to do is to chuck that in there and then in there squared but you can see the identity is starting to fall out now so we get cos of 5 theta is cos 5 whoops cos theta to the power of 5 minus 10 I'm going to stop talking and just work through it Okay, now we just have to clean up that big mess. So this is what we get. Remember we're heading for 16 cos to the power of cos theta to the power of 5. So this one here is going to be the mucky one. So collecting up like terms, at last we get 16 cos to the power of 5 theta minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta. Right, so that's as required. Now the first time you do one of those it feels like a whole ton of work. But if you sit back and think about what you've just done, you've given yourself a way to do any of those painful trig identities. So if you're asked to prove sine of 5 theta, you can do it using that method. If you want to prove uh, cos of 6 theta equals something, you can do it using that method. All you've got to do is be comfortable with Moivre's theorem and with your Pascal's triangle for your coefficients and know that you're equating the real and imaginary parts. So it's a very, very powerful technique. The other way that you could have done that and that I started to do that when I wasn't thinking about complex numbers, is you could do the same thing using some version of your compound angle thing. Okay, And there's not that much difference in how much work there is. Um, leave me a comment if you disagree violently. And I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to do the next part, the cos of 18 degrees, as part two of this video. Congratulations if you're still watching and still awake. And um, let me know if you've got any comments on this one. Thanks for watching.